everyone welcome back to my channel i hope you are all well in this video we are going wallpaper in jasmine eye and how stunning is this wallpaper i'm gonna have to buy it for my own house <laughs> This wallpaper is available from the range in the UK. Now, I did ask the guy if I could take a little sample and it's not very big, I promise. I'm actually gonna be using this huge teacup mold. If you didn't see the last video, I will link it above here. These are the gorgeous teacup coasters from Molds and Shapes. They also sent me the giant tray to match and it is beautiful. You can either use this as a trivet for your pots and pans or your teapot. I'm gonna make a clock. I'm actually gonna make a clock. I'm excited about it. It will be a kitchen clock with wallpaper in jasmineite. The first thing I actually have to do is create a template. Now, if you saw the teacup um, video, you would have known I filled the mold to create my own template, but this is too big to kind of use all that jasmineite. So what I did, I got some black acrylic paint on my hands, rubbed it between my fingers, and rubbed the entire outside of the cup area. Then I placed my paper down, rubbed it over, and this pretty much just gave me a paint transfer. And yeah, once I flipped it round, I was able to cut out the cup design. And that I was really happy with it. It came out really, really well. And of course, acrylic paint doesn't stick to silicon. So it was easily wiped off. What I did then was I cut around the outside of that cup and I cut quite inside. I'm gonna create a rim all the way around. So you'll see a colored jasmineite rim all the way around the cup. Because if you did see the cup video, you'll know that I got these strange ridges in the paper. I'm not quite sure why that happened, but I think it had something to do with the fact that I had packed the paper in right up to the edges and there was absolutely nowhere for that paper to breathe. So this is my thoughts. Cut it all around and then I'm cutting, I want to say around about three mils so that there's a three mil gap around the entire paper piece. Now, as much as I wanted the parrots, <laughs> I couldn't get it so that I could get a whole parrot in the cup. So I decided to just, you know, keep my fingers crossed and hope that the botanical would work. I love anything botanical. If you've been with me a while, sorry for the shaky camera. If you've been with me a while, you'll know that I do have a bit of a thing for botanicals. So just the leaves alone with the blue background, I think would just work without adding the parrots in. So here you see me just cutting it out. I actually do go ahead and work out the best way to flatten this. Now, in previous paper videos, a lot of you said iron it. Try ironing it and it might actually flatten the paper out. So at this point, it's still quite rounded because it's been off the roll and it's curled, curled, curved, curled. <laughs> so I'm gonna take it downstairs, give it an iron, and oh my goodness me, it worked a dream. Look at this, flat as a pancake, flat as a pancake. I'm now no longer worried about the edges curling up, but what I am gonna do is act fast. I'm gonna get it in the mold really, really fast. I'm not gonna hang around waiting for that paper to find its natural curl again. The iron worked with absolutely no water in the iron, so if you do wanna try that technique, it worked a dream. Now I've mixed up some jasmineite. I wasn't sure how much to make. So again, I made two of the trinket trays, so I think I weighed out about 200 liquid roughly roughly um and as you know in my last couple of videos i've been passing my jasmineite through a sieve just to get rid of any lumps and bumps that might be in there um i did i did make too much jasmineite what <laughs> that never happens <laughs> I did make too much. So I do have a new mold, um, which I ended up pouring some into the new mold. It's like a horoscope keychain mold. Very cute. Um, but yeah, here we are. I poured it in and I just used my spatula to work the jasmineite around the handle. The handle, it wasn't tricky. It's just, you know, I didn't want to make too much mess. So I didn't want to pour it in from the bowl. Then all I'm doing is just getting rid of some of those surface bubbles. Now, if you've been doing jasmineite, you know sometimes the surface bubbles are real. You can either blow them out, but somebody did tell me that actually using a spatula along the top to do what you just saw me do, it's actually so much easier to get rid of those surface bubbles. So now I've got it on my board the same way I had my teacups and I'm just gonna give it a bash. Gonna lift it up, <laughs> bash it down, lots and lots of shimmying and shaking to and fro. Now the reason I'm turning it upside down is because you can clearly see how unlevel my surface is. 
<laughs> this is 30 minutes later. It's time to demold. My advice again is to slide it off your board, flip it upside down, peel back your plastic, and then peel the silicon mold away from the jesmonite instead of trying to take the jesmonite out of the silicon mold. It is quite fragile at this point. So this is the best way to do it to lessen the impact. And I love it immediately, but I am noticing problems, more problems. Like, I don't know why this is happening. It didn't happen with my original paper in jesmonite trinket trays. It didn't happen with any other paper in jesmonite apart from the teacups. It's only the teacups. Now the molds themselves are perfect. Like I said in the last video, they are absolutely perfect. I've got this huge channel, a huge channel running all the way down the length of the cup. I'm not going to let it bug me. This is for my kitchen, so I'm not going to be trying to sell it. But I am a bit intrigued because I thought that happened on the teacups because I packed the paper in. Whereas this time I left a gap around the paper and it's still kind of warped. I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to think of the right name. I think it didn't agree with the moisture content in the jesmonite. Unlike, I don't know, it's a real tricky one. I don't know. Give me your suggestions as to why this is happening. Now, if you saw my original paper in jesmonite video, I did say I'm not going to try and remove any spillage, any seepage, because I did actually rip the craft paper when I tried but this is wallpaper this is so much thicker and I got my craft knife out and I just slowly this is very sped up I slowly chiseled away at the jesmonite that had leaked underneath the wallpaper and it worked okay it's kind of dulled the area a little bit but it did work okay I got most of it off so I was quite happy about that um now it's time to drill my hole in the middle so I know you'll ask the questions did I leave it to cure did I let it dry absolutely not I'm drilling pretty much five ten minutes after demold you can drill next day it would probably be easier to drill next day but you know for the purposes of getting the video out I'm doing it all at once but if you're going to try this at home, I would definitely recommend waiting next day, 24 hours later. So I'm just measuring with my ruler to make sure that my dot for my drill piece is actually central to the cup. I haven't put anything on the back, so there's no hanging tool, there's no hook, there's no string, there's no rope. You can add that at a later date, but my thoughts were that it's just going to stand on the side. I'm just going to prop it up on my worktop or put it on my windowsill just as a, as a kind of decorative item if you like. Now I'm using clay here, I'm using a ball of air dry clay under the bottom to minimise the, 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 the kind of strain on the jesmonite as I'm drilling. Now here is where I came unstuck. <laughs> so these are clock mechanisms. They've got small, medium, large, extra large shafts. How long your shaft is, is really important. So this is the first one I tried. This is the medium shaft. And I realized immediately it wasn't going to be high enough. There's no gold um, thread. I need the gold thread. Like you see here, there you go. Perfect. So this is perfect length. You just need to double check the length of the shaft of your clock mechanism because it depends on how deep your piece is for you to make your own clock. So here I am quite happily putting it all together, screwing it all together. Now the hands come with different sized holes. So you know which ones to put on first. So we're going to put on the hour hand that goes first because that's got the widest hole. After the hour hand is the minute hand. And once you just kind of like pop them on, you just want to double check that the mechanism is working. So once you put your battery in, it's going to work. It's all good. Then I put the minute hand on and I double check the mechanism again just to make sure they're working. Then it comes to the second hand. So the long second hand simply slots in the middle. And this is where I realized my mechanism was broken because why would a video go straight forward? <laughs> so you can see here, hopefully you can see, it's meant to have a metal rod in the center of that mechanism and the metal rod was missing. So I'm just showing you here the difference between the height of the shafts. And that's why I can't then go back and use the other one because even though it's working, it doesn't fit. Whereas this one has got no metal rod in the middle. You see here? Metal rod, no metal rod. So the one I need <laughs> doesn't have the metal rod. So I can't actually technically finish it. I can't finish it to how I'd like to finish it. 
My plan was to get onto Amazon, order a one next day delivery so that I've got the right length shaft and it's gonna work perfectly. And that's exactly what I did. I got onto Amazon, it arrived just yesterday and um, it's way too big, <laughs> it's way too big. I didn't measure it, but that's gonna be perfect for a future upcoming project because I've got a gorgeous um, plank, uh, I've got a gorgeous wooden board that I'm gonna be able to also create a clock with, which is much deeper and I'll be able to use that mechanism. So as it stands, this clock is not finished yet. The mechanism does not work because that second hand could not clip in so all of these little things just make sure that your mechanisms are working and if they aren't put them in the bin don't put them back in the clock mechanism box like I did okay lessons learned but I hope you've really enjoyed this this really was all about wallpaper in Jesmonite more than it was clock mechanisms but it does work to a certain degree what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try the wallpaper in the trays, my original full paper in Jesmonite trays that I made with the cactus and the tropical flowers and leaves, I'm going to try that with wallpaper next because I really want to get my head around why the paper's warping. I, I, I just don't know why. I don't know if it is the silicon. I don't think there's anything wrong with the moulds. I just think that they are so kind of solid they might be holding moisture I don't know so the next video will be the trinket trays with wallpaper just to double check it and reference it against this one just to see if it works basically because if it works again it's another game changer it's going to be so much fun to find your amazing wallpapers and uh, create some trays so I hope you've loved this one I hope you found it helpful thank you so much if you're still here don't forget to hit that thumbs up hit the subscribe button and yeah I'll chat to you in the comment section down below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!